good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you all for, for coming. Um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging with respect the Onondaga Nation, firekeepers of the Haudenosaunee, the indigenous people on whose ancestral lands Syracuse University now stands. Um, as you all know, we're here uh, this afternoon, this evening, uh, to celebrate and to remember Connie Caldwell. And I'm gonna make a few comments first and then invite a number of people to come forward and, um, and make comments. So I wanna th thank you all, uh, those in person and those uh, on Zoom. We have, uh, we have a number of people on Zoom, some of whom will make comments. Thank you for coming today to remember and celebrate Connie Caldwell, former director of career services who retired from the school in 2018 and who died much too soon this past summer. I want also to acknowledge that we have Connie's husband, uh, Paul, uh, and daughter Evelyn here, uh, and some other family members uh, tonight. I want to open with just a few brief comments and then I'll be joined by Connie's former colleagues and friends here at the school, by staff, by former students and by faculty, all of whom will share with us why for them Connie was so special. We will also have time um, once these uh, uh, friends and colleagues make comments, we'll have time for others to join and also to make comments. And when Connie joined the school in 1994, she immediately began creating a signature comprehensive career services program, which over time was recognized nationally and internationally as a model for other schools. During her time at the school, a total of 23 years, Connie was widely recognized by the profession as a pioneer. She was able, like no one else, to educate and connect some of the best architecture students in North America with many of the best architecture firms in the world. Connie's intelligence, character, and energy served as an example to students, faculty, administration, and staff. Notably, there's broad consensus among professionals inside and beyond the school that Connie's work in preparing our students for professional life has been the primary reason that our graduates are among the most highly sought after graduates in the world. In 2013, Connie received the American Institute of Architects uh, 30 Most Admired Educators. It's an award given by Design Intelligence uh, for her innovative, groundbreaking work in career services. I, she is among the only um, non-faculty members, I think, who've ever received that award. In particular, her annual architectural salary survey was unique at the time. Um, and its introduction uh, has been an essential tool for students, employers, and alumni providing our graduates with a distinct advantage over other architecture programs and firms in an employment market that is always challenging to navigate. Assisting our students in finding employment in some of the best firms globally had the secondary effect of building lasting relationships between firms, the school, and the university. Connie was a super connector, and when she made the connection, it stuck. This link between the academy and the profession is one of the most distinctive features of our school, and one of the many features that attracts the best students from around the world to Syracuse Architecture. And for that, and a great, great deal more, we have Connie Caldwell to thank. Connie was respected and often revered by students, alumni, staff, faculty, and employers. She made a difference. She made a significant and lasting impact on this school and in all our lives, and we will never forget her. Thank you. So I'm gonna ask uh, Katrin Hansen, a colleague and friend, uh, to come and offer some comments. Hi everyone, it's great to be here together with everyone, um, virtually and in person. 
to share memories of our wonderful friend and colleague, Constance Beards Caldwell, who was so fully alive and present with us for many years. And so it's still both shocking and difficult for us to believe that she's not here with us tonight physically, but I feel that she's actually still with us. Connie was, as Michael said, an extraordinarily gifted and committed professional colleague and leader at the school for over 20 years. She was our star and she was our inspiration, as well as a friend, confidant, mentor to many of us on the staff, as well as to faculty, students, and alumni. Connie left us with a great deal to be thankful for and a great deal to celebrate. And I'd like to focus my reflection on celebrating her accomplishments in those early days from the time she came to the school, which was, I think it was actually in 1993. Um, she began her time at the school as a temporary member of the staff, which is a path that has been followed by many of our most talented permanent staff. Um, and it was very clear very quickly that she had much more to offer and to contribute to our mutual great good fortune, the position of director of career services became available. And happily, Connie accepted the position. Although she was brand new to architecture and to career services, her counseling background and her keen intelligence prepared her and set her up very well to thrive in the position. Connie's most remarkable professional traits, in my view, include her ability to make connections and her ability to innovate. She was a born entrepreneur, taking a small... You need to speak into the Oh, sorry. She was a born entrepreneur, um, taking a small fledgling operation initially located in a renovated coat closet in what was then the dean's office on the first floor of Slocum and developing a thriving full-service educational program. She expanded the program all while learning about the profession of architecture and the ins and outs of career services. She built an entire curriculum of training and skill building opportunities, which started in the first year of study, along with a comprehensive resource library for our students and an extensive on and off campus interviewing program. Connie marketed the program to our students and attracted them to seek her out by making presentations in classes, offering topical seminars, hosting visiting alumni for portfolio reviews, and much more. And so word spread quickly among our students about the unique programming that was available, and she quickly, was, she quickly became in great demand. Rather than following the conventional model of placing students, Connie guided the students in a process of identifying and articulating their skills and interests and then taught them how to take the lead in creating their own career development. With input from alumni, faculty, and firms, Connie created in-depth data for the students about types of firms and their work, office culture, salary, benefits, and more, and helped them to develop their portfolios and resumes. Often, faculty with recent experience in the profession and alumni connected closely to the school became her partners in this process. She greatly expanded on campus recruitment opportunities and prepared students well for the interview process from start to finish. She was relentless in striving for the best, and she was a fierce advocate for her students and her program. Over time, as Connie began to know more and more young alumni, she had a strong desire to continue those student relationships after graduation and to provide full career services to alumni which at the time was a completely new idea. The school's career services program became known as one of the best in the, in the country, and Connie was recognized, as Michael said, in 2013 by Design Intelligence as one of the 30 most highly respected educators nationally, an honor usually reserved for faculty and nearly unheard of for a member of the administrative staff. Connie became our superstar. A hallmark achievement, again, as Michael said, was that Connie created a national salary survey for our alumni and then compiled the resulting salary and benefits information in multiple tables and charts, which provided our students and alumni the data that they needed to negotiate salaries, promotions, and grow in their careers. 
Over time, she partnered with the university's Office of Research to further refine and expand that survey. It was the first of its kind, as far as we know. Connie was never content with the status quo and was constantly adding to and refining her program. She worked closely with a series of very talented student assistants who helped her to understand the student perspective more fully and to provide what the students wanted and needed. She gave her student assistants a voice and full authorship in the resulting programming. She developed guidelines for students on professional ethics, proper attribution of work on group projects, interviewing and negotiation skills, and more. Her remarkable demeanor, positive, intelligent, humorous, empathetic, was central to her accomplishments. I would also like to talk about Connie as a personal friend as well as a colleague. Connie and I were almost exactly the same age. Oddly, I was the older sister. I was two months older. She was perennially, though, in her soul, the older sister, the big sister. Our daughters, Evelyn and Maura, are also the same age, and our spouses became good friends. With a great deal in common, over time, we talked about many things that mattered, and we got to know each other quite well. Connie was always there for me, professionally and personally, as she was for so many others in the school. We logged many hours and days traveling together on behalf of the school, particularly in those early years, attending professional conferences, alumni reunions, memorial gatherings, and many other functions. Connie's tendency to connect with others, to find solutions to difficult challenges, and always to communicate stayed with her throughout her life. She allowed me to remain in contact with her through the difficult days of her diagnosis and treatment, and we stayed in close touch. With the continuous and ever-present love and partnership of her spouse, Paul Caldwell, and the support of her daughter, Evelyn Caldwell, Connie courageously underwent challenging treatments, including a clinical trial that gave her significantly more time with her family and friends. With Paul's help, she sought out supportive therapies that surely enhanced the quality of her life. She remained realistic yet hopeful and opted to stay in contact and to share her journey with humor and with honesty. That is a very rare gift. Even when it was difficult for her to speak, she managed to communicate somehow, again, with Paul's help in many cases. Most often I felt she did more to cheer me than I did her. And I'm incredibly grateful for the opportunity to have walked beside her along a part of that journey. Through everything, she was the same loving and connected Connie that we all knew and admired, the Connie that I will always remember. My admiration, respect, and love for Connie has only grown over time, and I feel that her presence is still with me. Working with Connie and knowing Connie was an honor and a gift for which I will always be grateful. Thank you. And Stephanie will come up next. Stephanie Freeney. So my name is Stephanie Franey. I had the honor and distinct privilege of working with Connie through one of the most challenging and difficult parts of my life in which I lost my daughter. And from the first day that I started my career in the School of Architecture in 2011, Connie and I quickly connected as she came to my desk and shared with me that she had met my spouse at a vending machine downstairs. Uh, she had, she was trying to get an item from the vending machine and needed 10 cents and the man behind her kindly said, here's 10 cents. And it turned out that that is my husband. <laughs> um, and so with that, Connie shared the story and that quickly developed into a very close relationship in which Connie was always very curious about my own personal upbringing, 
She was very inquisitive about the ways in which I was raised and the things that mattered most to me. Um, I quickly learned from Connie the ability to have high emotional intelligence. And one of the qualities that I most respect and admire about Connie, and that is clear in the statements that have been set up until this point, is her level to connect with individuals, which, which comes from that emotional intelligence. Um, Connie quickly, you know, in her inquiring nature, wanted to find out more about me and learned that one of the things that I am most proud of is my status as a big sister and how being in Syracuse away from my family, I missed that connection of being called sissy. And so Connie, I, you know, when I look through my emails and I look through my communications with Connie, every time that we communicated, hi sissy, how's it going? And she had that way of making you feel so special in your relationship with her. And she nurtured your soul, she nurtured your spirit, and allowed you to feel that connection with her. And I will always remember the special ways that we connected and the ways that she made me feel through some of my darkest times. And I am forever grateful for the opportunity that I had to personally share that relationship with her and admire her perseverance um, through the most challenging time of her career and through the, her life. So I just wanna say thank you for allowing me to speak to share some reflections of my relationship and the admiration that I have for Connie. Um, and I would like to invite Garland to come up and share some of his perspectives. Good evening. Um, my name is Garland de Grafton Reed. I'm a 2009 graduate of the School of Architecture and the board president of the de Grafton Reed Foundation. First, I want to thank D. Michael Speaks and Julia and uh, Tracy and everyone else who thought of me to come and speak with you tonight. It's an honor to share my memory of Connie with you. Um, I could talk about all the reasons why our foundation partnered with the school to create the Connie Caldwell summer internship award, but I think we're all hearing those reasons tonight. Um, one board member who I know really wishes she could be here is Elizabeth Gralton, um, who's a dear friend of mine and a fellow graduate of the school. Um, we owe her a lot of credit to the establishment of the award, and I'd just like to start by sharing some words from her tonight. Connie made the transition into the real world attainable with her guidance, support, and warmth to all students. She really was the hope so many of us needed while navigating a path into our career. And I feel fortunate we're able to continue Connie's legacy through the award we established. You know, I really labored over what to say and share with you all. It's a monumental task thinking about all the ways she influenced me in my career. And when you start to think about it, you realize the enormity of her impact and it's true, I have moments every day that I could tie back to something she said or taught or encouraged. She taught us how to engage in a human way, one-on-one, -on -one, how to introduce yourself and not just your name, but who you are as a student, an architect, an individual. And those qualities really helped me build a professional family for myself and many others. And I can say that because you can always pick out the Syracuse alumni in the crowd, the way they conduct themselves, the way they speak to you, their talent, their engagement, and we owe a lot of that to her. She taught us how to write the best thank you notes. I mean, how many alumni remember that? I can't tell you how many thank you notes I wrote. And I loved my one-on-one -on -one time with her refining and refining my portfolio and my resume, and you know, she was just so proud of us. And when I got my first big job, and for the students that are here, you'll, you'll know when this happens, it's that moment where you realize all your hard work and dedication really pays off, and you accomplished it, you did it. Uh, I, I called my mom, and when I hung up with her, I called Connie. And we just talked, and we laughed, and she was thrilled, you know. And when I got licensed, 
uh, I sat down and I wrote thank you cards to the most important people in my life that shaped me, uh, maybe four or five, and I wrote one to Connie. And at the end, I stamped it and signed it, and trust me, when you get licensed, you want to stamp anything you can. So shortly after that, she sent an email blast to all the Syracuse alumni, and she asked everybody to send her copies of their stamps so she could hang them in her office. And, um, you know, again, she was just so, so proud uh, of all of us. You know, you could never, you could never leave Connie without feeling, um, you know, incredibly encouraged and influenced. And you couldn't walk by her without feeling that force of positive energy. Um, you know, she was our cheerleader. She guided us. She connected us with incredible professionals and alumni. And she was the bridge to the next step in our career. And the impact that she had on us, and most notably the school, I don't think can be underscored enough. But I'd like to leave everyone with just two things. Um, to the students who won't have the opportunity to know her um, in the way in which we did, I want you to know that beyond the incredible resources you have here at the school, with the staff and your mentors and your professors, uh, you have a family of Syracuse alumni out there who are there to be your cheerleader and guide you and to help bridge those connections. We're there to embody her spirit and carry on in honor, in her honor for you. And lastly, to my family of Syracuse alumni, if we could each invest in a student, and I don't mean take them to coffee or buy them lunch or hop on a Zoom, I mean really invest, use your professional capital to help them build those connections and help them with their first big job and watch their progress, follow and encourage them throughout their career, I think maybe then we could all do the work that Connie did in her lifetime. Thank you. All right, Kate. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> okay. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Mary Kate Craig and I'm currently a thesis student here at Syracuse. I'm very honored to have the opportunity to speak with you today. And I'd like, I'd like to start out by saying that, as Garland mentioned, anyone who has ever worked with Connie knows how important and how much she valued a handwritten thank you note. So I'd like to consider this my personal thank you to Connie. I remember first meeting Connie when I visited Syracuse as a prospective student. I immediately noticed the care and kindness she shared with others and later on grew to appreciate her efficient and direct approach towards helping students develop their career skills. To be honest, she was a large reason why I chose to come to Syracuse. Although the time I spent with Connie was limited, I feel like I have gotten to know her better through my conversations with other students and alumni. I wish I had more time with Connie. I know that I would have benefited from her leadership and guidance today as I look for job opportunities and continue to develop my networking skills. I know she would have been there whenever I needed her and would have celebrated each success I had along the way. Although she is not here today, Connie continues to contribute to student success. With much thanks to the DeGraff Reed Foundation and the Connie Codwell Summer Internship Award, this summer I was able to participate in an internship with NBBJ's New York Healthcare Studio without the financial burden of living and working in the city. This opportunity provided me with an incredible learning experience where I developed new technical skills as well as interpersonal skills. I'm incredibly grateful to have had this experience and I will never forget all Connie has done to foster support for myself and other students. If Connie was here today, I know that she would be proud of what her legacy has created. I find comfort in knowing that the scholarship will continue to help Connie's legacy by providing future Syracuse students with similar opportunities as myself. I look forward to promoting the annual internship award in her memory so that students just like me have opportunities to further develop their skills in the professional world. I'm confident that Connie's lasting impact on the lives of students will never be forgotten. Thank you. And uh, Jeff Sinda, do we have next? Uh, my, my name is Jeff Zenda, and um, I had the honor and pr privilege to first learn uh, from Connie and then uh, work with her uh, for over 20 years. 
and um, considered Connie one of my closest friends. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a few stories uh, and that, that really resonate with me and I hope honor who Connie was as a person. Uh, one of the first times that I, I met Connie, I uh, rushed down to that coat closet that Katrin was mentioning before and, and uh, <laughs> sat down and hurriedly kind of said, well, what do you think of my portfolio? What do you think of my resume? You know, what could I be doing better? And, and Connie kind of looked at me and she was like, whoa, 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 settle down a little bit, you know? She was like, why don't you tell me about who you are first? And I was kind of sputtering around and, and disorganized and, and trying to explain who I was and I was kind of coughing and rasping, probably because I was up all night in the studio and probably smoking all night as well. And she offered me a cough drop and I thought it was a kind of an amusing quip when I, I shot back. I said, well, I don't like menthol in my cigarettes. Why would I like them in a cough drop? And she just kind of looked at me and she said, Jeff, you know, one of my previous jobs was to get people to quit smoking. And I kind of looked at her and she said, there's really no point in talking about your career if you're not going to live through architecture school. <laughs> and so in an anecdote, that was Connie, a person who cared for people so much as human beings that she went above and beyond, you know, to really understand who they were in order to help them and really be the best self that each one of the students could be. She cared for each and every student that came to her and connected with them on an incredibly personal level. And I know many of you experienced that, that firsthand. She helped me realize who I was as a developing professional and, and really set that course for the rest of my career. But this isn't really a story about me. This is, that's just one short paragraph in a novel of thousands of students who found themselves personally and professionally bettered as part of Connie's empathetic guidance. And in case you were wondering, oh yeah, she really did convince me to quit smoking as well, so I guess Connie saved my life. There's many reasons that Syracuse architecture has ascended to the top of the rankings, and that's clearly due to the contributions, the amazing leadership and faculty here. But I think Connie played a significant role, as has been mentioned before, in, in really solidifying what got us there as a school and what's keeping us there and has set a path for future generations to succeed upon the foundation that, that she laid. There is no better graduate that is ready for the professional world than comes from right here in Syracuse architecture. And Connie codified that. A testament to that contribution that stuck with me for years. I was having lunch with a colleague and his father, um, who was an alum from Syracuse architecture, and his brother was actually about to graduate from Newhouse School. And uh, we were bantering about, and, and uh, my colleague's uh, father uh, shared, he said, you know, I'm really worried about Mike graduating and getting a job. And, and my colleague said, Dad, it's Newhouse. Mike's not going to have a problem. Don't worry about it. And his father turned and, and looked, and he said, I am worried, because with all that Newhouse has, they don't have a Connie. And those are just some of the ways in which, you know, I express my gratitude to Connie, and that's how I, I remember her. Her ever optimistic spirit, her never ending smile, her big hugs and sage perspective, and always, always finding the best in people and having people thrive on their personal best. You know, in today's polarized, charged, and contentious world, I think we can all honor Connie for who she was and her legacy by being a bit like her every day. Thank you. And next, Larry Davis is going to share some of his thoughts. Thank you, Jeff. Um, I'm Larry Davis on the faculty here. And, um, it's a real honor to be able to speak on behalf of the faculty, in some cases, and about Connie. Um, we arrived at the school about the same time, uh, 94. Um, then we had Bruce Abbey, I guess, to thank. 
or otherwise, I guess. But Connie had a balanced and emotional presence, and she didn't fluster easy. Those are the first things that impressed me. She was a great listener. I think a lot of people have said that today. Uh, and she had a great sense of humor. You can see there, that's kind of sly, uh, sly smile and kind of, and she had a wicked eye roll, man. Oh my God. Uh, and so she could easily laugh with you, uh, sometimes laugh at you uh, on many topics. And for that, I really enjoyed always just crossing paths with her and talking with her in, in the office. Of course, when I first became chair, I really got to know her. We would sort of confide with each other, navigate the politics of the faculty, students, professionals, fellow colleagues on the staff. And she was really helpful in getting, helping me get a read of the students and staff about our move to the warehouse, which was an amazingly complicated, somewhat stressful uh, institutional moment for this place. But we got through it, I think, because um, she fed us a lot of really good information, or at least me, and helped me sort of figure things out that I didn't always realize at first, again, because of this perception she has that everybody's been mentioning up till now. Uh, we didn't always agree, but she always listened and, and didn't talk over you uh, or whitewash the situation with some admin speak or anything. She really said it like she saw it. And, uh, and so her response was always very present uh, with what you had just said. And I really appreciated that as well. Um, she was so she was super helpful in helping us solve the often complex social challenges of, the, of this school's community. Of course, what she's really well known for is career services. And uh, again, she realized that I hadn't been out of the profession very long, so she was sort of picking my brain. Oftentimes, uh, get her to get her head around it. Of course, she didn't. She did an incredible job, but we had a lot of discussions about the difference between the world of the profession and academia, I recall. Uh, and this was really helpful, I think, to her. Um, and from my vantage point, you know, she was in this sort of trenches between these two worlds sometimes, experiencing things that weren't always pleasant or things weren't said very pleasantly, I should say. And, and so, you know, we would often discuss this. Uh, in, in this often puzzling kind of low intensity civil war between academia and the profession. Uh, conflict that doesn't always exist in other countries, but still it was, you know, I just said this is kind of the way it is and this is how you have to understand how they would use, uh, see this issue versus how the profession would see this issue and so we would talk about that. Uh, she did an amazing job, as everybody said, uh, about uh, with the students for helping them get ready for interviews, developing their CVs selecting the most effective projects for the professional portfolios, negotiating final offers when they were made, uh, and, and, and in all those things, she was both pragmatic and supportive. This gave the students enough confidence to do well in this often mysterious process of getting one's first job. Uh, it really helped them avoid those kind of blunders in making portfolios, correspondence, interviews, all these things that people have been talking about today, uh, and I think it really made our students, and there's a lot of proof of this, uh, very, very competitive out there in the job market. I mean, looking back at my undergraduate years, not at this institution, I wish I had a Connie, uh, because I make mistakes in all those areas at least twice. Connie's quiet persistence made her a steady advocate for the staff and their concerns as well. Uh, from better office space arrangements to leave policy, she was always brave enough to speak up constructively and bring concerns to the attention of the school's administration. This is the same kind of courage that I had her traveling back and forth to Duke for cutting edge cancer treatment. I very much miss her dry and upbeat spirit, down to earth intelligence, fearlessness, and her generosity. It seemed these all came naturally to her from a place of balance and poise in her steady soul. She is an inspiration for how to handle sometimes chronically difficult challenges in life with strength, realism, and good cheer. For me, the memory of her will always be an important reference point for how to be not just at work, but in all of life. Moving forward, I hope I can follow her amazing, positive example and continually be on a path for improvement for and beyond myself that supports the key groups and people that are part of life. 
For that, in particular, I say thank you, Connie Codwell. Kevin. Thank you, Larry. I'm Ted Brown, professor in the School of Architecture. Been here for a while. Um, and, I, and knew Connie, um, knew Connie for a while, worked with Connie uh, for a number of, certainly for a number of years. Connie, we miss you, uh, dear Connie. She's there and she's also here, that's great. It's wonderful to hear from my colleagues and friends, some former students, uh, alums, uh, some that I don't know, construct the aura that was in some ways, still is Connie. So what do you say? Often, we didn't need to say anything, and now I'll feel like I'm doing a bit of piling on here, uh, speaking after so many uh, wonderful words. And I should say, I've learned a lot in the last, uh, in the last several minutes, which is fantastic. I'm sorry, they're asking you to speak. Okay. I did not know Connie super well, but pretty well. We worked together professionally and we were friends, buddies at times, had great mutual respect, but we were not always aligned. Uh, I think that had to do with her mission, if you will, um, and uh, our mission, seemingly, on the part of the faculty, uh, which had to do with career services and interviews on, on campus and in the school. Um, and occasionally interrupting uh, some of our, our teaching activities. But I think that's to say that she was doing her job too well, or simply that I or we were not aware of the power and potential of career services. She had a vision for how career services could and should serve the students at this school and as most of us know, served the school, the alumni, and the profession. She became that legend, a legend who constructed a model for schools in this country. Career services. Well, it's an area, a subject or a subject matter that was in, a, in the past, like the deep past, an office somewhere. Something a student might consult if they could find it. There was a time, and I'm not talking about this school, but all schools, all majors, when career services was a university outfit that you might consult in the spring of your last year or maybe the year or two following. So one should ask, or Connie asked, what might be another form of career services? Over the course of I don't know how many years, because I don't count those anymore, uh, Connie understood that when a student entered, before a student entered our program, they entered a network of relations. She was reading the tea, tea leaves, working rhizomatically to be sure, quite independent of a student's ultimate career choice or type of practice, she would stunningly quickly loop students in. It's no longer a fifth year gig. You start building the network on entry, meet with the first years, participate in admissions events for prospective students, reach out to alums, get the kids, which is to say all of our students, uh, to have a portfolio page or two in one year. Build relations inside and outside the school for students over five or, or three years. Set up, as has been said, databases and facilitate, facilitate connections. And as we know, invite firms to the school to interview our students. Like, who knew? That's so smart. And in turn, that network, that rhizomatic field included and includes alumni, other professional offices, the faculty, the administration, indeed, even for me, whenever I needed to contact an alum, well, you just ask Connie. She'll give you the coordinates. She fulfilled a vision, was devoted, critical as needed, 
always with what I'll call measured compassion. Maybe more personally, we were, uh, as I said previously, friends, but comrades at times. Uh, been here long enough to have lived through uh, a couple few deans, uh, a, a changing staff and faculty. That is the way in our academic setting. There was a cloudy December day. I say that more as metaphor than as weather, maybe the 23rd. I was in Princeton when I needed to talk in a backdrop of silence to someone at the school, somewhat desperately. Connie took the call. We talked for, I think it was two hours. But those of you who know me, maybe that was 30 minutes. But it was, in, in a few ways, transformative. And that content uh, remains between the two of us. She will, in my mind, go to, now be in, heaven, if you believe in that sort of thing. Not because of that one conversation, but because it was indicative of her capacity to listen to people across all stripes, first years, parents, fifth year, alums, friends, faculty, who have been around for a while, faculty who have been around for a while. Empathize, strategize, direct, and support. Simply Connie, brava, we miss you. Connie's passing is a great loss <coughs> from an onset of a sudden illness, to be sure, a shock. We still expect to run into each other in the kitchen. I still expect her brave voice to represent the concerns and interests of the staff. Life is fragile. Live it hard and smart, with passion, with conviction, and with a smile. Connie helps teach us those lessons. I don't know who's up. I think it's me. Can you hear me? Let's see. I'm here. Are you? to start. Okay. Uh, where am I? I said, if I'm not, is that the microphone? <laughs> is it not working for you on your end? But, uh, no, I hear a lot of that. We can hear you just fine. I'm not sure why. Is that better? Is that better? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Good. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew, uh, Ted, and Julia. Uh, and hi to Paul and Evelyn. Um, apologies, I can't be there tonight. Um, so I'm Leo Ciavara and I initially met Connie as a grad student in the early 90s. Our relationship developed further as colleagues during my short term as assistant professor here at SU. And ultimately our friendship really blossomed over the past 20 years as a, a member of the advisory board and an employer of Syracuse Architecture alums at my own firm, where many times due to Connie's efforts we were 100% Syracuse staff. And while all of this might seem like I had a unique relationship uh, with Connie, part of what makes Connie so amazing, as you've heard, is that I am only one of hundreds of similar long-term relationships 
Connie has established with Syracuse students. Garland and Jeff, who you've just heard from, and Marielle and Mario, who are to follow. Richard Gluckman, another hugely successful SU architecture alum, former advisory board chair and visiting professor, used to always say, Connie is such a huge asset for the school and a wonderful person. No offense to those of you in the room, but I think you would be hard pressed to find any other member of the faculty or staff who has contributed as much to the architecture students overall experience every single day during their years at the school, but as we've heard, even more importantly and uniquely in terms of Connie's continued impact on students' professional lives long after they leave campus. <clears throat> Connie's bio on the school's website noted, she maintains the alumni directory. <laughs> what an understatement. In reality, Connie single-handedly created a vast network of SU graduates spanning decades. She was the single thread of continuity to literally every single living alum of our program. Many schools offer career services. None do it like Connie did. Others offer career advice, but what was so special about Connie, as you've heard over and over today, is she made what can be a formulaic process personal. She went beyond simply matching students with firms, instead matching people with people, intuitively sensing the finer points of personalities and placing students with an acute sensitivity so that they could excel in the profession. This is a remembrance today for Connie. <laughs> And I guess if there's one memory or word that I most associate with Connie, it is love, L-O-V-E. While I didn't spend much time with them together, I know how much she loved you, Paul. <laughs> and when I happened to catch Connie on the phone from her hospital bed after her initial diagnosis and procedure, the thing she kept talking about was love, actually. And in this case, it was love with a capital L that she said filled her completely the moment her daughter Evelyn had first walked into that hospital room. Really and truly, Evelyn, what sticks with me to this day was Connie Hutt saying how overwhelmed, bowled over actually, she was the, by the love she felt in that exact moment. And while I've only seen photos of her together with your son, her grandson Liam, those images screamed pure love in the eyes of Connie, but also those in those of Liam. Even beyond family, what I always felt with Connie <clears throat> was that she really and truly loved her life. She loved her garden. She loved her job and career services. She loved her colleagues who are among her closest friends, Katrin being at the top of that list. And what I personally am grateful to have been the recipient of is she loved her students. Really, each and every one of us, even the ones she thought were unusual <laughs> or unique, she loved them and she found each of them their own unique home at the current firms perfect for them. I cannot imagine my career successes without Connie's direct contributions from her sense of humor, which we've heard so much about when I would stop by her desk during the final grueling days of thesis to her yoga, cl yoga classes for colleagues after many hours of teaching studio to her continued support of my practice until not long ago by coordinating interviews with graduates, creating the salary surveys we rely on, and understanding the importance of finding the right fit. When I polled my firm's current staff, seven of eight of whom are alums, the words that came up in association with Connie included selfless, compassionate, rock, and in the truest definition of the words, generosity of spirit. Paul and Evelyn, we all thank you for sharing Connie with us all of these years. And we all thank and forever will love you, Connie. Thank you. I think Marielle is next. You're good to go. Are you able to unmute yourself?
It says you're unmuted, but we're not hearing you. still can't hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. Perfect. I think I have a little bit of echo. Okay. Thank you so much and sorry for the wait. Um, this is an extremely hard for me, but I can picture Connie say, telling me right now, Marielle, nothing's going to happen to you. Just go speak with somebody or do what you have to do. You're not good. You're going to be okay. Like you're not going to lose a limb. She would always tell me that you're not going to lose a limb. Um, so I still remember the first time I met Connie. I remember her smile. I remember her blue flowery dress. She was standing in front of her office in Slocum Hall, looking joyful as always. Um, this was in the summer of 2011. I had just started at Syracuse a month before I was about to start. So it was a month before I started at Syracuse as a freshman. And like many other students, I went to her office um, looking for a job. Yet, to my surprise, I got a job with Connie. Um, I worked for Connie as a career service student for five years. And um, we developed a very strong friendship since day one. Um, and yes, we were very different in age, but for some reason, I always felt that she was more joyful at, than me in many ways and brought so much joy to my life that I will, there's no way I can thank everything she did for me. Um, Connie came into my life in a moment where I was experiencing the love and loss and grief of my father. Connie showed me unconditional love and kindness in the moment I felt hopeless. She helped me understand that I was not alone and that I, by opening up to others, I might find compassion and kindness in the most unexpected places. Um, she showed me so much about the profession of architecture, about the career, yet for me, our friendship was the most meaningful part of everything that she taught me. Um, like I mentioned, our difference in age helped us learn from each other and see the world in a very different perspective. Connie was one of my closest friends. I cherish all the moments we spent together in Slocum Hall, in Casanova, and even in New York City. It was always a pleasure going to Connie's and Paul's home and cooking dinner with them. We, at some point, uh, I would visit her after graduating every few months, and we would make a new meal and like test a new recipe and we kind of even if we failed we would enjoy every single moment connie and paul love their home they love hosting people they love hosting alumni and students as well as faculty and they loved to show especially connie loved to show me every single thing that she had received from many students and uh, alumni all through her career at syracuse she always had an amazing story about something in her house. Um, I remember um, towards after her second surgery, she would tell me that she was uh, envisioning fire. Um, red, red of passion and red of love became her symbol and her mantra. And uh, she would collect paintings that other uh, students had made of red for her. And um, show me and show everybody who visited all those beautiful artworks. Sorry. It has been extremely hard for me to come to terms with the reality and the fact that I have lost such an important person in my life. But I have to come to realize that living in fear contradicts what uh, I consider one of Connie's most important teachings to me which is to face fear in the eyes and learn how to overcome it. 
It hurts me so much not to have been there in person for her last year. We did talk many times at the beginning. Um, then we stayed in contact through text and call, which I will forever be grateful for helping me stay in contact with Hannah. It meant so much to me. Um, I can only imagine the physical and mental, mental and emotional challenges that she faced during this past year. But regardless of what she was facing, she would always be open to listening to others and listening to the most uh, simple conversations would become such a moment of joy. She's impressed in my life in the small, in my life in small moments of joy and sadness. As for me, she was one of the most beautiful, kind and loving persons in, person in this world. Her friendship meant so much to me and I am lucky to have been able to share so many great memories with her. She brought joy and courage to so many people. She made this world a better place and her legacy will live in all of us. I work, like I said, I worked for Connie for five years um, and she quickly became my mentor and close friend. Connie was a talented educator and kind and loving person. She put her heart and soul into everything she did at Syracuse into School of Architecture. Like many others, Connie taught me everything I know about architecture as a profession and she plays a major role in the, my career development even to this day. Our friendship extended beyond the walls of Fulton for a halt. She showed me so much kindness and, and compassion. She helped me become a stronger person and I will always picture her beautiful smile and really sense of humor. It is an honor to have been able to share such an important part of my life with her. Connie brought joy and happiness to many people at Syracuse. She made this world a better place and her legacy lives in all of us. My deepest condolences to Paul and Ebony, and I hope to see you soon in person. May Connie's soul rest in peace. Um, I think, uh, Mario, I pass it on to you. Um, I'm, my name is Mario Mohan. I I'm graduated class of 2010 with a Bachelor of Architecture. Um, I, I just want to tell a story of how I got to know Connie and, and uh, what went on after that. Uh, at the end of the first year at Syracuse, uh, I sent Connie an email asking if I can get help to get a summer internship. And I knew it was, I think the studio presentation just ended and it was a bit last minute and I'm like, oh, with a try. So I sent her an email. And uh, she replied back that she couldn't help me because her only requirement, which I think I knew and everyone knew, was you need to attend the resume seminar in order to work. During my time at Syracuse, was attend the resume seminar, and then she would help you out. So she would help you develop your resume, and then after that, uh, she was open to helping you out. So once second year started, the first thing I did was uh, uh, sign up for one of Connie's resume seminars. And she, she helped me realize how I didn't know, I didn't really have much to put on my resume from my perspective, but she helped me realize how, how much I can put on there and even stuff that I didn't consider important were, were important. Uh, throughout the rest of the year, five years of Syracuse, uh, Connie and I became good friends. Uh, oh, and uh, I visited her, I visited her office, I think about once a week, just to say hello and yeah, just say hi. Uh, talking to her always gave me a sense of calmness and reassurance from the stress of studio and classes. Uh, she was always patient and positive, and uh, even when, even the past couple of years with everything she was going through, she, she always stayed the same party. Uh, she made, she helped me with when uh, employers came in, uh, Leslie was saying, came in to interview students. Usually they came in to, to interview thesis students. And she would always sneak me in or introduce me just in, 
even though I was younger, just to, to ask him about summer internship or, hey, check out his portfolio. And that helped me land some cool summer gigs at different uh, architecture firms in New York City. I thank her for that. Um, uh, we also know Connie had a great postcard collection. And when I travel, I always, I, I would ask her, hey, do you, what do you, uh, do you want me to bring you back anything? And her answer was always, send me a postcard. And she told uh, everyone, all the alumni network, I was like in, 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 a, in emails, send me a postcard. Kind of like Garland was saying about the postcard. She, she even asked for postcards with people's stamps in the same way. Uh, so whenever I visit a new place, I always made sure, even in smaller places where I couldn't really find a postcard, I would search for places to just get Connie a postcard and be able to send it to her. Um, but the last time I saw Connie and her husband, Paul, was right before the pandemic. Uh, she, we met at a cafe with uh, another uh, mutual classmate of mine and um, my wife. And uh, Connie brought her uh, collection of postcards that she received from me with her just to show. And it was, it was fun to see and look through all of them. And there's places I didn't, I had things that I, didn't rem I had, didn't remember sending to her, but it was, it was cool to see the whole, the whole collection and how she kept it up throughout the years. Um, and even, I, even after graduating in 2010, I always, every time I went to Syracuse, it was kind of like still being in school. I always went to Slocum and Connie's office. Well, I always, I always try to make sure I, I can go in on a uh, on a school day, so a three day weekend, so that one day I can go visit Connie in her office and say hello. Um, that's so I just want to say thank thanks Connie for dedicating the time to helping uh, others succeed. Uh, I consider you my favorite professor. No offense to anyone else I've had. Uh, Martin and Leah, I know you guys are on the call. Anyone else? <laughs> uh, she's impact, Connie's impacted uh, many people and is a great loss to all of us. Uh, sending love from New York City. Sorry I couldn't be there in person. And uh, also sending love to Paul, Evelyn, and Liam. And uh, thanks for letting me share my words. Hi, Mario. Thank you. Uh, thanks for your uh, thanks for those really lovely, amazing comments, especially about the postcards. I think these are. I mean, we're we're all in a way mailing in uh, some postcards right now to Connie. It's really kind of incredible to hear. It's not incredible at all, actually, to hear these great stories because they are because there are probably thousands of them. Um, and I think we, we appreciate all of them. We also would like to hear more if there are any other comments that people have who are either here in the audience tonight would like to make. Um, you're please, you, you're welcome to come up. Crystal, if you want to come up and make a comment love to have you come up. Um, also, if there are people online, we can unmute you and we would invite you to make some comments if you'd like. Um, the current student, Crystal, is going to come down and make, make some comments. Hi, Crystal. Hi. Hi, guys. I'm Crystal. Um, I wanted to say a few words because I've Personally, I've never met Connie, so technically, I, hear, I heard from when you guys were speaking that she started working here a year after I was born, and then I started school here a year after she left. So it's interesting because my first time hearing Connie's name was when you guys had the, the 2020, the first year of the summer internship that he just spoke about. And 
I had applied for it that time, and then I applied for it in 2021. But the reason why I'm mentioning it is because I was applying for some other stuff, and obviously you have to have an internship to apply for that award. And at the time, I, I didn't have any idea I would get the internship. Um, but I just inquired with the firm, and that firm was against law um, this year. And I was mentioning before I found out whether or not I would get the internship that I want to apply for this scholarship, and I mentioned the name. And you guys spoke a lot today about people being authentic and their legacy and the type of person that they are and how it can, you know, I guess supersede them even like beyond when they're working or in the school. And the minute I mentioned that I wanted, if I was to get it, I would like to uh, apply for the Connie Cadwell Scholarship. The amount of people at Gensler just went crazy. And so I figured like, wow, this is, I, I fully, I didn't get to meet this person, but it became very clear to me that this person is like renowned in some sort of way. And, um, the person that I was speaking to on the HR call at the time, her name is Kimberly, I remember um, over the summer I had seen that Connie had passed. So just because I remember her reaction and a few people's reaction on the Zoom call when I was in the interview, I just mentioned to them that, you know, I know you guys uh, know Connie and it seemed important when I had mentioned the scholarship at the time. So I just wanted to let you guys know that she passed. And um, yeah, it, they, they started talking to me about her time at NCARB and just a lot of things and it was, it was really amazing to me how I've, I'd never met her, but I mentioned her name once and so many people seem so impacted in one way or the other from a bunch of different places. Um, the people that I was talking to at the time, they had worked with her under some NCARB the Gensler people at the time, they're in talent development, so maybe she knows them from that perspective. But um, it, I just find it really inspiring that, you know, someone can have such a large impact. And I think it also just goes to show the importance of authenticity and passion. And, you know, I just think that's something I'm taking away from coming to this uh, memorial. Um, or this remembrance ceremony about her, just to continue to be authentic and passionate and to, to lead with that, because it's clear that it has like a very wide ranging impact, like no matter, you know, w whether or not you're working at one place or another, another. So it's really great to hear all of you guys' stories. And I just wanna say that, you know, it's as much as you guys love her, it's very clear she's even, <laughs> more love, well love, um, even beyond this school. So yeah, that was just my two cents, guys. Thank you, Crystal. Those were really wonderful comments. OK, um, we have, yes, please. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Marina Gabriela, Marina Gabriela Brink. And I graduated with Mario in 2010, and Martin Hoke was our first professor. So it's nice, nice that Connie, even today, is bringing everyone together. Um, I wrote something for her. I posted a picture on my Instagram account, and um, the smile is very similar to the picture that was up there earlier, so I think you guys will be able to relate even without seeing this picture. But I said, I will always remember our dear Connie Caldwell like this with a kind, tender, loving smile. I met Connie at a resume workshop in architecture school at Syracuse University. She was responsible for the Career Center, which meant helping prepare us for the real world, and that she did. She loved her job and went above and beyond always. I believe that the reputation and success of the school is greatly due to her magic. I was lucky to get to know Connie personally and grew very fond of her. She touched my life in more than one way, and inspires me to be kind, generous, and supportive, always with a smile, and to fight when an incredibly strong and kind woman. I wanted to share this picture that I share as cherish in my heart and wish for her to rest in peace and for her memory to never be forgotten. 
My thoughts are with her lovely family and dear friends. If you can, please do something kind in her name because I bet she would love that. I love you, Connie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other um, any comments from the audience? Andy, do you see any comments online? We have an online comment. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Oh, hi. Hi, Michael. Hi. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Nidia and then um, I graduated from uh, in Syracuse in 2018. So that was also the year that Tony Connie Cook told us that she got the cancer. And then um, I just want to share some little things that uh, between Connie and our year. So the first thing is that um, we made this card um, to wish her back to health. And then she said she's the queen bee and then we are all the bees that are there to help her recover. So that since then, I know people from our year we keep sending her cards have the bee pattern and then we wish, we wish her to be back in health. And then we visited her place. We saw her really old cat and then she's always really cheerful and happy. And then um, it's, it's, really, it's really sad to, to lose her. But I think um, the message she, she gave us, will, we will all carry it through our own life. And another story is that I got. I told Connie, I think I'm not ready. I think I'm just too bad to be in this position. And she said, um, you know, they invested in you. Just like I'm here to help you, I invest in you as well. So I feel like she's always invested in all of us. And then I wish that all of you who were helped by her or um, maybe only have a very brief encounter with her can carry her spirit. So we will all believe in ourselves and then because, because she believes in us. And okay, yeah, that's, that's about one of my thing. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Idian. Thank you, Idian. Um, Elizabeth is going to make a comment. Elizabeth? Hi there, my name is Elizabeth Carlton. Garland already mentioned something from me. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to the School of Architecture and the faculty for putting this together because um, as you can tell, Connie meant a lot to so many of us and it's been really meaningful to spend this time together. Um, and I especially appreciate the Zoom because I'd love to be there, but it just wasn't possible this time. So thank you so much. We miss you, Connie. We're always thinking of you. Thank you, thank you, uh, Garland, for for um, for reading the comments earlier. Okay, um, I don't see any other comments online. I want to um, I want to thank everyone for for sharing your incredible stories. I have to say, like like Ted, I. I feel like I learned quite a lot just in you know in the last hour. Um, I also want to thank want to thank everyone who spoke in person. I want to thank uh, Connie's family for being here. I also want to thank all of you online. It's wonderful to see you. It's great to hear you. It's great to hear all the all the stories. They're incredibly touching. We do have um, we have a reception after this. Uh, down in the atrium. You may not join us, those of you on Zoom, um, <laughs> but maybe we'll share something with you uh, by phone. Um, if there are no more comments on Zoom, and if, uh, if no one would like to share any more comments from the audience, I think we will we'll conclude and 
we'll go down in the atrium. And oh, yes, uh, Paul, I think, I think Paul's going to come forward and make a few comments. together to my dear friend Katrin um, and for the wonderful speakers and Jeff who sent us shave cream and razors when Connie had to shave her head. I used that shave cream for a while. But I really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, my daughter Evelyn and I, my sister Terry's here, Evelyn's friend Nicole, some of my colleagues from social work, Eric Kingston's here. I am so grateful because <clears throat> you really have honored her. And um, you honored her long before she passed in so many ways. Uh, <clears throat> I still hear from people and the number of cards and emails and texts and phone calls and, that I received after she passed is amazing. Um, the love that was shown throughout her you know, challenge, um, she loved her job, she loved the students. The staff and faculty were, as you heard from several today, <clears throat> friends as well as comrades and coworkers. Um, I think that <clears throat> she had the, the blessing of being honored before she passed away when Michael gave her the citation at the graduation in May 2019. So memorable. So moving. That was really <clears throat> special, Michael. And we appreciate everything that the school has meant to her for all these years. Um, she had a wonderful career. She was fulfilled. She died with no regrets. She felt loved and cared for. Thank you all for what you did to help her in that way. My daughter and I are very grateful for what she had here in the School of Architecture. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, I also do want to thank, uh, thank Julia uh, for really organizing all of this and, and thank Katrin as well for helping. And thank you, Paul and Evelyn and family for being here and Maybe we'll conclude now and go downstairs and, um, and have some refreshments and, and have some more conversation about Connie. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Thank you. Well,